The other day I was on the user forums for Adobe Captivate and I saw that someone was using one of the built-in knowledge checks from the ready-to-go slides in the asset store to come up with a knowledge check for their particular learners. And they were struggling with the whole navigation thing. So I'm gonna walk you through today how you can customize these particular slides to suit your particular needs here. So I'm gonna select a blank project and click on create, first of all. And we're gonna click on the assets icon in the toolbar. I'm gonna scroll down until I find that particular knowledge check slide. It's in the safety ready to go project. And it's this one here called knowledge check. I'm gonna go ahead and insert that into my current project. And I'm gonna go ahead and delete this first slide. I don't really need it there. So here's the problem with this uh, particular interaction. It's a, a fine interaction, but uh, because the project typically is going to have a playback control turned on, you can see down here, it's very easy for learners to click this forward button and bypass it. So in other words, they're not being forced to answer this knowledge check whatsoever. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uncheck show playback controls. And while here, I'm gonna get rid of this gray bar here, which is on the border section of the skin editor. And we can uncheck show borders there. So now when someone previews this project or, or launches this project, the only navigation will be the controls that you provide them. So keep that in mind when you're customizing these slides. So that's what we need to do. We need to provide uh, a way for learners to continue from the slide if they've answered it either correctly or incorrectly and received the appropriate feedback. So I'm gonna actually um, align the submit button with our check boxes here. So I'm just gonna select both of those and align left. And I'm gonna use the submit button to create my continue button for this slide here. So I'm gonna just press uh, control D, which will duplicate the submit button so I don't have to recreate it from scratch. And I'm just gonna place it to the right of that current submit button. And we'll change the label to continue, which makes sense here. Now, of course, it still has the action associated with submit. So I'm gonna to go to the actions tab of that particular new object and change this to go to next slide. Now I don't want people to see this right away. So I'm gonna do two things. I'm going to make it not visible in output by clicking on the little eyeball next to the object label. But I'm gonna to need to know the object name and Smart Shape 10 isn't very memorable. So I'm gonna call this, um, I'll call it next button. Now, these particular knowledge checks, um, while we're here, we might as well show you how you can customize them. Answer A is, or answer one, is the correct answer. If you want to change that to, let's say, we want to make answer three the correct answer, here's what we need to do. I'm going to select checkbox one. I'm going to go into the advanced action for checkbox one by clicking on this advanced action folder icon. And we're gonna change the assignment of this user variable with the literal value false instead of true. We'll update that action, click OK and close. And now we'll select checkbox three, which is what we want to be uh, the correct answer in this case here. So we're gonna edit that advanced action so that it's actually going to be true. Okay, we'll update that action, click OK, and close. Now with the submit button, if we want to show our continue button, which again is set up to be not visible in output, we'll run that advanced action and we'll edit it to do something a little bit different. What it presently does is it changes the multi-state objects that are on this slide, the title and the message here, to either a correct message or under the else section, an incorrect message. So that's fine, we're not gonna change that, but we are going to add the action to show our next button. So in other words, once the user has made a choice, has made a selection, 
will see the next button and can continue with the rest of the e-learning project. I'm going to copy this line and paste it down here as well. So I'm going to update that action, click OK, and we can close. Let's test this out and make sure it works. Okay, so you can see our continue button is not there right now. We do have the standard interaction. There's no way that the user can use any of the play bar controls to skip forward. So they must answer the question. Let's get it wrong first. We'll choose what was the original correct answer. So I'll select that and I'll press submit. And you can see I get the incorrect message. But I could continue with the rest of the e-learning at this point. Let's reset this interaction and just see it in its correct version. So I'll choose checkbox three, hit submit. I get the correct message. And of course, there's my continue button. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.